Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Busy week this week. Um, I don't know whether you all know, but I'm getting married on Friday. So I've got the Friday and the Thursday afternoon off. Just about squeeze that in. Got a lot to fit in this week. Fortunately today we've got Paul and Isaac in today. Um, so we're gonna get Paul cracking on with the Lotus Twin Cam. I didn't manage to get all the pistons finished on Friday. I've only managed to do one of them, um, but at least Paul can just crack on straight away and get the um, that piston on the rod and get that down the hole maybe, um, while I do the other three. And then I'm gonna crack right on with the cylinder head, doing the clearances, because that's a, a bit of a laborious job. A bit of luck, if he's here, I'm not sure whether he's here three or four days this week, but we can get, we can get that pretty much on its way this week. Um, so that's good news. As of the end of this week, guys, this time next week, I'll be a married man. So yeah, maybe I should have used in this video um, the thumbnail and title from the last video, <laughs> but I'm sure it's not all that bad. Many of you in the comments will probably say otherwise, but... But yeah, some positive comments on charging for storage. Um, a lot of you guys think that's a good idea. Many of you say that um, it's probably not enough that I'm charging, but I don't. I'm not. I'm not really out for sort of making money too much on the storage. I'd rather them just pick the engine up so we can make some space and strip other engines. But um, there's got to be some incentive for them to come and pick it up. Really, that's that's the whole point of it. So yeah, thanks a lot for your comments, guys. And um, as I say, because I don't comment back a lot of the time on the comments don't think that I'm not reading them because I am and I normally just what I normally do is gather a bit of information up from the comments and then put it on my next video so um, don't think that I'm being ignorant guys I'm not I do read them but there's just so many to report back on so yeah a little bit disappointing that the the VXR guys are not going to pick their engine up I like some of you said in the comments I think it's pretty pathetic really for two three hundred quid um, they've then got an engine back for their car. At the moment, they've probably got a five, six thousand pound car with no engine. So I don't quite know what they're gonna do there, but that's not up to me. But I have had a couple of emails from people that are interested in it. So as soon as we get that email of confirmation, we will um, we'll get it sold. Right guys, so as you can see, I'm just about to face the final piston now. I've done three of them for Paul. So what I've done is just write a note on here of how much has got to be took off. So we want 135 thou off the face here and 20 thou off the outer face. So that will bring, that will give us about 10 thou protrusion from the block face on the edge here. And the correct compression ratio eventually when we take 135 thou off that. Um, so what we do first, the reason I've got the tool face this way is so when I do, when I take the 20 thou off the outer, um, by the time we get up to the edge here, it sort of blends it in rather than being a, a sharp edge. Um, so that's what we do there. So I'm just gonna do that first. The piston's running true in the chuck. I've made sure of that. So we just touch on the face there using the, the cross slide. We pop this down to zero. And we do a 10 thou cut. 10 thou is about the maximum I do on here with aluminium. So stop it just before the end and you can see there, so that's, that's that. Another 10 thou and we are done on the outer edge. There we go. Now we wind off, we go into the centre. If I have a look down the piston line, you can see, you see where the flat is on top of the piston. So we just want to touch on there. Wind off, zero the cross slide. And away we go. 
so that was 10 thou we're just going to continue to we've done 135 Right, so we've took the full amount off now, guys. The only thing left to do on here now is just deburr it. Now, on the outside, I don't want to use the cutter because I don't want to put any sort of chamfer on there. I just want it to sort of stay as it is. Um, so all I'm going to do is turn the machine around slight, uh, slowly and you use a bit of wet and dry on the edge there just to remove the sharp edge. And the same with the wet and dry on the valve cutouts here. Just do that by hand. So we just start the machine up. Bit of wet and dry over on an angle. And then what we do is just run our finger very lightly round. You can see all the burrs are gone now. So we're just gonna do these pockets here by hand in the corners, make sure there's no sharp edges. And there we go, guys. All deburred and ready for Paul to do his balancing on them. Just started the valve clearances on the Lotus. And what I've done, first of all, I've talked down the inlet cam and not the exhaust cam. Then we go through that, then we go through, we, we loosen that, then we go through the exhaust. The reason for that is if we tighten both cams down at the same time, when it's not timed up, when you turn in one cam, you could have contact between the valves. So we leave the other cam slack. So we've gone through the inlet and then we've gone through the exhaust now. Um, see this one's still torqued down, we've got to loosen it up. And what we've got, I've noted down the, the valve clearances here. So the valve clearance that we want for the exhaust, it's plus or minus one thou, but it's six thou we're aiming for on the, sorry, yeah, six thou we're aiming for on the inlet, and it is 10 thou on the exhaust, plus or minus one. So as you can see here, Number four exhaust is, is within limits. These two are one or two thou over limits. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna tighten those up very slightly and get them right in the center on 10. Same on here, you see these are miles out. Now bear in mind, all we've done is lap the valves because the seats were perfect. We have faced the valves slightly. So we, we did expect them to close up very slightly because obviously we faced the valves, but here we have nine on number one, which is, must have been massive to start with seven is still over so that must have been slightly big these two here are, are a bit tighter than i would have expected to be honest with you so we're going to open these ones up we're going to close them and get them right on the limit so we're just going to head off over to paul now and just have a little look see how he's getting on he has been i think he's been gapping the rings this morning or checking the gaps did you have a good weekend i did yes how about you uh it was shit. no it was good <laughs> That was a good weekend. <laughs> it was all right, was I just, it? I just worked a weekend. Oh, um, God. Right, twin cam. Twin cam. So um, how are we getting on? What's the progress? Right, so the crank's in the block. Yeah. All bolted up. So Spin we've taught that up now, have we? Yeah, 60 foot-pounds. Spins, spins lovely. Still feels all right. It's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. ideal. Um, I weighed all the pistons. Okay. I weighed all the rods. They're all been sort of half a gram. So right, I'm, okay. I'm happy with that. Um, the rods are the same. They've been half a gram. I mean, you would think there will be the right weight being a so that's piston. obviously what they weigh on the top in grams yeah 372 yeah. um the rod's about 319 319 and a half so and you've been um you've been gapping the rings you say yeah the rings are gapped so we're running about 12 to 14 thou top and bottom ring okay did you have to do anything to those rings or the bottom they... rings were quite tight they were sort of about 89 thou oh were they um i've just gapped them Slightly, so they're running about 14, 13 to 14. Okay. But the top ones are fine, they're all about 12. Oh, that's all Obviously, right. the all control rings, you can't really gap. Yeah. Um, so, I'm happy with that. So, I've just put the, well, I just put some rings on one of the pistons. And the piston's on the rod, obviously, so. Yeah, yeah happy days. So, why is it we can't gap the bottom rings then? Is it because they're, they're chromium out, aren't they? They're very flimsy. Yeah. Um, like you, a chromium I mean, material, isn't they? Yeah, I mean, what I do is I put, I put them in anyway just to make sure they're not overlapping. Yeah. And as long as they're not overlapping and other gaps aren't massive, then I think it'd be hard, it'd be hard push to gap that anyway. To be honest with you, normally with these aftermarket forged pistons, I tend to find that the all control ring is very rarely you have to do anything with them. I'm going to say, I Even mean, if you needed to. They usually run, a lot of the time, they run them quite big on the clearances, I find, but. Yeah. 
So I mean, I as I say, I can't remember the last time I used Acrylite, so it's always best to check. I'm surprised because a lot of pistons I've, I've used Cosworth pistons before in the past, and like they're all sort of the gaps are all down to sort of seven or eight thou. You have to spend a good few sort of few minutes of ring just getting it right. Yeah. And the problem is the ring grinder is you, you can easily take too much off. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. you've got to do a little bit of time, a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, so next step now, I'm obviously just doing the head. Yep. Um, clearances are all over the shop on the inlets. Nice. So once I've done them, mate. I reckon by this afternoon, we'll probably be ready to bolt the head on. Ideal. So. I've done all the clearances, guys. Um, and you can see I've got them all laid out here. Now, what I did on this, because we're only talking two, three, maximum four thou, um, just to open that one up, what I've done is I've took it off the valve as opposed to, to messing about with any of these um, shims because as you can see they're not easy to set up on these shims and remove material accurately so what I do is one by one when the heads um, on here obviously at the minute it's on the head refacer but what I do is I put the valve in measure it from the back of the guide to the top of the stem accurately um, and zero that and then say if the valve we need to open up for example on this number one inlet we need to open it up five more thou we just take five thou off the end of this valve stem we've got you've got to make sure that you don't get too thin obviously where the collet sits on top of there um, and also you don't want to go too far down on there so when that cap is on the top it touches on the top of the collets, which it doesn't. Um, so that's the way I'll do it. If the valve needs to come back through, again, I just take it off the face of the valve and bring it through. But like I've said to you before, I only do that really when we haven't got that much to take off. We're talking two, three thou maybe. So all those are done, laid out, ready to go back in. You can see these shims here. There's various amounts of shims to go underneath the spring base. Um, and that is what that is to do, is to bring the spring up so we've got the correct tension on the spring um, and got the right spring height to start with. Um, so yeah, as you can see, he's got the front cover on with the chain and whatever. He's just putting the ARP stud and nut kit in there. All the pistons are in the block, sitting at the correct height. You can see now we've got... Um, but one thing we did notice when we were skimming the head, which is very strange. Now you've got to bear in mind, this is a a race engine that's been going for probably 10 years now although we did have this bit of a disaster in this one cylinder so the head has been off and a piston has been replaced in the past but nothing else was done so this engine was built as far as i know this was built by renowned race engine building company um, but what i found is very oddly and we've took four thou off the block face um, we've got a 10 thou thicker head gasket, so we've got about 6 thou to play with on here to get back to where we started. Um, I've took, uh, I've give it a 3 thou lick over, because um, there's been no head gasket issues. I mean, you have got a bit of damage around here, but that doesn't matter to be honest with you. It's all within the gasket line, so we're not going to start messing about with that. But very, very strangely, it's obviously clocked end to end. Um, sitting on parallels here which is so it's all true but it faced okay um, up to about here although it's leaving some very strange marks around the edge and usually when you get marks like that it means that it's been sort of sanded and where the sander goes over the edge it sort of falls back but it seemed to cut okay up to here and cutting this end bit it's, it definitely sounded like it was taken off more to me. Um, so whether that was sitting up proud, but then we've got this very odd bit here, which you can feel is distinctly lower than the rest. So as I say, it's only a three or four thou cut we've given it already. We've really got a couple of thou to play with on here, but that is probably one of the reasons why this end of the engine was plastered in oil. I don't know what's happened there, almost looked like it's um, someone had run a sander over there but that to me is definitely not good practice so as you can see guys fortunately the head has cleaned um, so all we've took off this is 10 thou uh, but the reason we had this area here that was not cleaned before is because as you can see it's more visible now the head has been welded in that spot um, obviously had a bit of a nightmare down here at some point um, but the only thing that does concern me is they've welded that and they haven't faced it afterwards. 
So whether they've dressed it by hand, I don't know, but that is clearly going to be a reason, if not the reason, why it was at a severe oil leak at the front. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we shall see you in another video. Cheers.